Heavenly Father, we do humbly ask and request in the name of Jesus for uh, understanding to be open, that we can hear the words of truth, that these sins will sink deep down in our hearts, speak to our minds, our conscience, our spirits more than anything, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, you know, we have a lot, we do have a lot of, of, of people waking up, which, you know, again, the radio broadcast reflects and lets us know um, just how this truth is um, spreading. It's only still a few. It's just a few people. Um, and that's just the way the Most High called it, said it was going to be, and that's just the way it's going to be. And we thank the Father for that um, because the few that are being added, you know, uh, the majority of them are, are serious. Uh, I got a couple of emails that, that came in, and, and um, when saints, you know, make the sacrifice to actually drive uh, a couple of hours to go to a fellowship, um, you know, uh, the people are excited about meeting each other. Um, so I, I want to go ahead and put a, a message out to all the new Israelites. It's very important um, that when you're meeting that you still, first and foremost, remember uh, what got you together. What got you together was the message of the gospel or being able to hear the real, true message of the gospel. And so when you get together, first and foremost, the message should always be priority, number one. You, you have plenty of time after the message to meet, greet, shake hands, hug, kiss, do all that other stuff if you haven't done it before the message. But remember always to put the message first. Always do because you're going to hear stuff in this ministry um, like you've never heard all across the, world, the land and no matter what um, denominations or non-denominations uh, you've come out of. Uh, most people uh, don't deal with a balance, especially when uh, we're up against um, spiritual wickedness in high places that's hardly ever uh, spoken about, much less talked about in the time that we're living in now. It seems that uh, ministries all across the land have adopted a hands-off attitude uh, against the devil. You can read about the devil. You can see clearly that when Jesus came, he clearly uh, ripped the cover uh, right off the devil and exposed him for exactly who he was. Um, I mean, we could see, um, you know, entrances of the devils and people in the, you know, working in people's lives. Uh, when we look, go back and read the account of Job, um, when we see what um, Saul and Samuel and the witch of Enidor, I mean, we, we could see stuff like that, but never before, like when the Messiah came and he actually exposed his workings and showed us exactly. What was going on? Well, what was this thing? Well, instead of the devil having some um, horns on his head and running around red with a, a pointed tail and a pitchfork, Jesus actually showed us that the devil was actually in human beings. And I want to break the news here to you tonight that he's still operating and he's still working in human beings regardless of how ministries all across the land refuse to talk about him. Um, refused to expose him, but you know that's one thing that the Messiah, the ministry, did. He continually warned us of the workings of Satan. He continually warned us uh, about our adversary and what we're up against. As a matter of fact, when he showed up on the scene um, and he started delivering his people, um, he, he showed us that uh, a lot of uh, sickness and diseases has to do with demonic spirits. Now, most people today are very prideful, um, and they don't believe that they have these spirits. Um, I can tell you as a pastor, um, it, I was one of the first ones here to get a, a boatload of spirits cast out of me. And Sister Carol, too. And actually went places and got spirits cast out of me. So I'm utterly appalled that nowadays that, and I know that a lot of you out there don't know the word nowhere near what I know it. And that's not to say that I know anything. Because I don't know anything as I ought. If that will make you feel better. Um, but I'm amazed at how all of us who possess all this knowledge. And the saints of the Most High y'all here that are sitting here straightway. How that uh, I continue to tell the story. Tell the account over and over and over again. That when we first uh, really tapped into this thing of deliverance. We, we grabbed the bull by the proverbial horns. And we got after it for like three and a half solid, just flat out years. It was just constant deliverance. Every message was about deliverance and the workings of the devil, uh, exposing his workings, uh, uh, letting you see exactly what's going on and stuff. And, and we just, I, miss, I guess 
even though that we had lived a separated life, we were set apart. We obeyed the scriptures. We could read the Bible when it says that no man had nothing he called his own. And, and, and a long, long time ago, um, when it wasn't popular to, to live in what you call a community, when we were scorned, mocked, derided, chided, ridiculed, called everything under the sun, cult, fanatic, crack poop, uh, crack pot, or whatever you want to call it, uh, uh, by many different proverbs and bywords and stuff, yet and still we hung in there. Uh, we've had many what Elder Doug refers to as high tides and low tides. We've had many ups and downs and stuff. And, and I'm literally appalled at the time that we're living in now when we can see the spiritual bankruptcy. We can see the moral decay that is going on in the time that we're living in right now. We can see the society is literally um, um, falling right before our very eyes right now. And nobody is equating this to the workings of the devil. Hardly ever, if any. And when, if you were here last Passover, you and, and if that was one of your first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, or tenth deliverance service, it, you always marvel every single time. Um, so we have not ran away from the teachings of the Messiah. Matter of fact, we've ran to them, um, obeying what the words of the prophet says, that, you know, we need to search for the old paths. We need to seek for the old paths. And, and when we find them, we need to walk in those. And when we find those and we walk in that path, we end up finding rest for our souls. So I I'm I'm marvel at all you holy people today who can read books and get deliverance. That didn't happen with us. We could read books and then we had to put the ap practical application in. And, and, and we had to really get busy. I mean, we have a lot of war wounds on us, a lot of blood. You can call it blood and guts, couldn't you, brother? Hallelujah. We've learned a lot of things the most painful way because there's nothing but a thin piece of carpet and then up under here is nothing but solid concrete. And when you hit that floor a few times, boy, it kind of hurts a little bit, don't it? But it does give you an everlasting reminder, doesn't it? But I'm a marvel at all you people today who are sanctified holy and you didn't follow Christ nowhere near to the level that we follow that. And y'all forbid for us to compare ourselves one to another. I've always believed that a man or woman only follows God as, as much as they want him in their life and in their heart. And while we were making all these sacrifices in the midst of what you are call an economic boom, and while nobody was even thinking about y'all, everybody was running to and fro and doing their own things and stuff, we were making the sacrifice and doing all this and discovered that we had an abundance or an abundant supply of devils in us. And so we got to work. And there's a lot of people who started with us that are no longer with us. And I thank y'all for it because I hope they never come back. Of course, if they come back, they can't come back to live here, if you understand what I mean. No, oh, hallelujah. No, you can't come back and live here. Hallelujah. And, of course, they know that too, so that's a good thing to keep them away. Hallelujah. But uh, I tell you what, we've had an extraordinary amount, an extreme amount of devils cast out of every single one of us from myself, the elders, the sisters that have been here for a while, um, the people who have been here like five years plus uh, who have been diligent. Everybody is not diligent in the ministry, but to those who have been diligent in the ministry, we have a testimony. We have a serious testimony that, that he is real. Now, since the enemy knows that we know where his six is, we, we know exactly what he's doing, um, and we're not ignorant, just like the Apostle Saul says, of the devil's devices. Now, the rest of the world can keep ignorance of the devil's devices, and they can keep on suffering, but we are not ignorant of his devices. So we try to spread this wealth of knowledge and this wealth of understanding to the remnant, to you, those of you who are the real, true Hebrew Israelites. We try to get the word to you so that you can go out and make disciples, and then they themselves can become Israelites as well. But in order to be an Israelite, you have to do the work of an Israelite. You have to do the work, the same work, that the Messiah commissioned the apostles to do, which they passed on down to the rest of the disciples, that work is still going on till today, still till today, because I don't see the new Jerusalem coming out of heaven. I don't even see the king has even came back yet, because if he has come back, we missed him then, hadn't we? Because this world is in a bad condition, and if this the kingdom war, we're defeated already, aren't we? So we know that he has not um, come back a second time. His Holy Spirit is alive available and well and it's still operating today so I want you to understand that regardless of what people 
refuse to do, whether it be through knowledge and understanding and refusal to do it because, you know, pride runs very deep in a lot of people. Most people can't never imagine somebody actually praying for them as wicked as, as we are. You understand what I mean? I've had pastors um, go to um, a church that I was unfamiliar with. Um, and we drove a couple of hundred miles to even get there. And he had another pastor with him from Africa. And I've often said, and the people would tell you, I said, you know, it's a shame that America has all these so-called evangelists going around evangelizing the world with this sorry, sick brand called Christianity, when the truth is we need the world to come and evangelize to this immoral, this wicked, homosexual, faggot, um, whoremongering, uh, drug users, uh, uh, satanic society. We need the world to come and evangelize. We need the people that are in the backwoods of the Congo to come and civilize us. That's what we need today. Because we're, we're screwed up big time. And when I look out and I see all, all these things is, that are taking place, and I see all these things um, that, that are happening, I'm a, I do marvel. I am amazed how that people today don't have no spirits at all. Just making an utter defiance and adopting a defiant attitude towards the gospels, which the king, when he came, showed us the devil. Aren't you not, are you not amazed, saints? Hmm? As much as we've seen, places we've gone and things done, I've been to places and cast spirits out of people. I don't care where I go, from one end of the United States to the next. They all act the same. Don't, don't care. I don't care. That's how you know that the devil is alive and he's working. So the king spent a lot of time talking about him. We spent a lot of time talking about it because that is who your oppressor is. That's the one who is making your life a living hell. Now, what the enemy is doing in the time that we're living in now is a thing called reverse psychology. See, now we're in the age of wisdom. We're in the age of imparted knowledge because the Bible told us clearly that knowledge will increase. And because knowledge has increased, people have gotten increasingly worse. Am I making sense? They have, they have gotten increasingly worse because now we've learned how to justify. We've learned how to rationalize. We've learned how to deceive our own selves. And let's just use old-fashioned language. We've learned how to talk ourselves and everybody else out of everything that is true. So he's using reverse psychology now. And the psychology is, is that the thing that the Messiah exposed of old, you don't have it today because we're in a new dispensation. <clears throat> Yet and still, we see humanity getting worse. So when you get all this education and you have all this pride that is stinking like a septic tank, the last thing you'll do is equate and put two two together and start cleansing yourself because the Bible does say this. Why are you thinking because Christianity has taught you that the only thing you need is so-called repent, confession, salvation, and that's it? That ain't what the book teaches me. And somebody need to tell you what the letters of the renewed covenant is all about. Now, I, I just got finished saying a statement that's really diametrically opposed to each other. Because the, the, the renewed covenant is not letters written by an apostle. The renewed covenant is the same covenant written on the tables of your heart. But because we've been conditioned and trained very well, we do not know how to talk while we're educated. All the letters that Paul, the Apostle Paul, which America so-called esteemed so high, are not scripture. Not a one of them. As a matter of fact, he does spend a lot of time quoting scripture. Just like the Messiah said, it is written. It is written. It is written. Because when they were on the scene, they did not say it was written in the scripture that I wrote you. You never heard an apostle say, thus saith Yahweh. 
Elohim of the universe. You never heard him say that. You know why? Because they were not prophets. They were apostles. Now, I know understanding may be a little bit too high, but just try to come on down a little bit. And you'll find out that I'm not the pride for one. A lot of times, you know, people equate passion with anger. You know, in this society. Because we're, we're, we're used to being a people with clean mouths and filthy lives. And so we uh, deceive ourselves as well as others. And when we have people sitting in front of us who are living this thing and abiding in it and being real, you know what I mean? We think it's a show because we function after show. We function after hypocrisy. But there are people that are really truly being sincere about this thing. And there are a lot of people that are sincerely wrong. But because the arrogancy of man is lifted up so high, um, most of us, 99.9% .9 of us, we're not going to find out until judgment day. Because the truth is, somebody is right. And somebody is wrong. If he had men of God back then, in the days of the prophets, and he had men of God in the days of the apostles, and even after the days of the apostles, you better believe he still has men of y'all today. Now, whether you recognize it or not, that's between you and him. That's none of my business. Hallelujah. But the ideal is the hope that every man would come to repentance. But yes, I have not never, never ever met a person in America that did not have an abundant supply of demons. That includes all you people who fly from out of country and come visit us too. You got them too. And no matter what language you speak, no matter what culture you come from, they all still behave the same way when they're manifested and being cast out. That's how we know that we're on point. Hallelujah. But you watch the Americans, we'll sit up very arrogant like there ain't nothing wrong with us. So when the message is being played and you have the opportunity to hear this message by way of the internet, first of all, number one, you ought to thank y'all that your ears are able to hear the things that you're hearing. Hallelujah. And then, number two, you should make sure that you have diligent inquiry in your mind towards what's being said and not allow anything to distract you because I want everybody to understand this. Everybody who you meet that may come over to the house for fellowship is not serious about serving him. You remember, Paul gave us a present day warning. Even way back in his time, the warning still echoes all the way up still till today. He said that I know that after my departing, grievous wolves shall enter in among you and not spare the flock. And he said, there will be men even of your own selves. They shall arise and speak things which they ought not and for the sole purpose to draw away disciples after them own selves. So the warnings are very clear. It's there. He warned us about as there were false prophets among the people, there will be false teachers among you. He warned us about false brethren. He warned us about uh, false teachers, uh, false apostles, uh, deceitful workers. He, I mean, it, the warnings go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. I mean, it goes, it's there. It's written right there in what we've all been trained to call the renewed covenant. Hallelujah. Um. But, hey, the book is clear if you're a student, but you need to get about your father's business. We need to do some serious deliverance. And we need to be doing it in these homes when we get finished with the message because usually when we get finished with the message, that's when the demonstration of the power is supposed to take place. I mean, after all, you spent a couple hours running your mouth, shouldn't we, the preachers, teachers, isn't that right? Disciples, now shouldn't we get about our father's business? I mean, after all. That's um, before I, I get on here tonight's study, which won't be long. Um, let me let me go over here to turn you over here to Matthew twenty-eight real quick, and let, and let me show you exactly what the words of the king and what he said. Let me go to Mark sixteen. I could actually go both of them. I could actually, matter of fact, we may even go back to Matthew twenty-eight, but we're gonna go to Mark sixteen. All right, and of course, everybody knows exactly what I'm going to be reading when I go to Mark 16. It's almost hallmark. So we're going to start at verse 14. Mark 16, verse 14, 15, 16. And we're going to read all the way to the end of Mark 
16 to verse 20. So we need your undivided attention. So the warning, saints of the Most High Yah, is do not allow the spirit of sloth, apathy, and complacency. And remember, the woe is unto those that are at ease in Zion. You need to remember these words. Now, it's impossible for you to remember these words if you're not a student of this word. David clearly made a profound statement when he said, I will hide thy word in my heart. And the sole purpose of hiding that word is so that he would not sin against him. So we need to be spending time, especially trying to have the spirit of recall and try to put the most high in everything that we're doing. Because today you have your whole spirit, you have your soul, and your body that must be preserved blameless until his coming. Not running around ignorantly hollering, I'm saved, and you don't even know what you're saved from. Hallelujah. You ain't saved if you're still living and practicing sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. Now, listen to the book. Read verse 14. Read. Come on, brother Shane. Read. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart. Now, that's a lot of times people, you know, they, they kind of wonder why come I always start off the messages the way that I do. Because the Bible says, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove and rebuke. It didn't say come in here and make you feel good. It didn't, no, it didn't either. It didn't tell you to come in here and me, and me to stroke your feelings and emotions so you can go back out in your apathetic state. No, we got to get you online first, on point. Because you know just as well as I do, you done fallen short of the glory of Yah ever since Shabbat. Oh, amen. Hallelujah. Now, look what the, the Messiah, the first thing he did. You know the reason why? We have this present day unbelief with us today. Unbelief is always equated with a hardness of heart. And he rebuked them. That's what the word upbraided means. He up rebuked them with a stern rebuke. Read on, brother, saying. Because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Now, we already know that he's risen. And remember, the, the Messiah said to, to the apostles, you know, your eyes are blessed, Thomas, because you see. But blessed are the, 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 the eyes of the people who have never seen, yet they believe. And we still have the same message that was preached over 2,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago when we go back to Moshe. Same message. And yet we still are dealing with the spirit of unbelief. Hallelujah. We're dealing with it. It's here. Read on. And he said unto them, Go ye into the, all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, this is where a lot of people are looking stupid, ignorant, and dumb when it comes to their theology. Because you got people thinking today that only a certain group of people can be saved. Or a certain group of people should be saved. Yet the marching orders right here say go into all the world and preach to every creature. Isn't that something? That means that the intent of the Messiah was to spread this thing worldwide. Hallelujah. Where, whether if we want to use the terms like we've been trained to believe today, Jew and Gentile. For those of us who are informed and know better, all of Israel and the rest of the wicked people in the world who are called Gentiles. The message is for every creature. Read on. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. This is where I try to preserve the conscience and the minds of people. Because you know the first thing that happens when you receive the knowledge of the truth. You want to go and you want to tell everybody because you have a lot of joy inside of your heart working. You got it. Your, the light bulb is on. 
But then you run up against a brick wall real quick because you find out that people is not as interested in this king like you are. So we can save you a lot of heartache and time. Huh? The king said, he said, he that believeth and is baptized. In other words, the one that believe, they will take action. They shall be saved. Now we've had an abundant supply of people come and be baptized. And we never hear another word from them ever again. Let me tell you what Jesus told Judas. It would have been better for that man to have never known the way. It would have been better if that man had never been born. Yeah, that's what he told the disciples. You know, for people to toy around and think that they can play with the, the, the eternal king of the universe. He gives you a prescribed way of salvation to have you to do it. Your heart get convicted and you get baptized and you go right back off into the world. And you know, Peter wrote about that too. James talked about it too. They call you dogs. Has returned to a, its vomit and the sow that was washed to a wallowing in the mire. That's why we're in the messed up condition we are today because every time you cut on the TV or you go look at the, some, somebody so-called preaching and teaching and all we get is these flower child messages that never bring about any substance. Oh, hallelujah. We're going to preach Christ. And Christ just got finished rebuking the disciples. And then he gave them some marching orders. Go out and do the work. Isn't that right? So the ones that believe, they take action. The ones that don't believe, they don't take action. And what is it to you if you give somebody the message once or twice and they don't take action? What you need to do, do is preserve your sanctity and preserve your peace. Because you can't give nobody the Holy Spirit. You cannot open their understanding. No, sir. No, sir. After you have done giving them the message and, and, and the Most High has not opened their understanding because he is the one that's doing this, you need to turn the page. You need to do what Christ says. Take the dust, shake it off your feet, and go on somewhere else. And that's how you love people more than they hate themselves. Hallelujah. Americans are rebellious. You keep bugging them about something, they're going to resist more and more and more. Oh, yeah. Tell a child they can't do nothing in their teenage years and see what they try to do. Try to go right behind your back and do the direct opposite. As you get older, humanity sets in. Oh, hallelujah. Read, Brother Shane. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Mm -hmm. In my name... Shall they cast out devils? Well, we ain't got too many of them going on. We sure have a lot of people. With it. We don't have a shortage of people running their mouth, but we have very few that are actually doing this. But he, he says the believers would, would do this, though. We don't have any argument or compuncture with the king. We just diligently obey what he says. How about that? Read on. They shall speak with new tongues. Our people don't believe that today, and the doctrine is spreading worldwide. Nevertheless, we ain't going to argue with them. We do. And people who listen to me, you will eventually do it too if you have not already received it. Hallelujah. We um, got a report from out in California that Brother Jawan received the baptism of the Holy Spirit on Shabbat. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? As well as those brothers up in New York. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And another sister is tearing uh, for it or asking for the Holy Spirit. Just about that. Hadn't received it just yet, but she will. Y'all have the attitude. Nope, I'll be back. That's how you do it. I'll be back. Glory to the king. Read on, Brother Shane. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Now, I'm not going to spend a whole 30 minutes explaining that verse just so you can get it when you hadn't even covered the first two parts yet. All right? But no, we don't hold no snake handling services. Hallelujah. And we don't go around drinking strychnine either. <laughs> All right? Glory to the king. And they shall lay hands on the sick and they, die, and they will recover. So we do do that, right? Let's read on. Let's see what the verses continue to say. Read on. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and set on the right hand of God. Mm -hmm. And they went forth and preached everywhere. They just preached to the black people. Yeah. 
everywhere. They preached to the white people. Everywhere. The only, they only stayed in Europe. Everywhere. Just America. Everywhere. They were in Jerusalem and never left there. Everywhere. They went where? Everywhere. Well, if you go everywhere, what's left? Nowhere. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So all you people worrying about have the people all over the world have heard the gospel. Yeah, no, they went everywhere. The way you equate it just because you haven't gone everywhere. And if you did go everywhere, you wouldn't do the gospel. The only thing that gets you moving is some something that pleases you. I'm going to go to the ice cream parlor. You call that everywhere. And you're going to minister by making a card and leaving some tracks. I did the Lord's will. Is that preaching? See, we don't redefine preaching. Uh-oh. But we got to say these things. Put it on point. Because remember... When you come to the king, you don't belong to yourself no more. In case you, if nobody told you, I try to tell you from the very beginning, your life is over. It's kind of like when you get married, your life is over. When you have children, your life really over. <laughs> it's dead over then. Hmm? Everything you work for, all that you do, it's all for that family from that point on. You're finished. That's why Paul said it's better for man to bite his eye. <laughs> and he also, you know, the scripture also said that he that find a wife will also have trouble in the flesh. It didn't say that the woman was going to have trouble in the flesh. It said that the man is going to have trouble in the flesh. You don't believe me, go back and read it again. If you argue with me all you want, but then I want to see you put the same argument to him. I want to see that arrogant spirit. I can hear the other spirit. But what about when a man find a wife, he find a good thing? Hmm? Yeah, she is a good thing if she's Proverbs 31. You women ain't got to tell me that men are already screwed up. I already know them. That's why I, I spend my time making men out of them. One thing about a man, a man knows a man. And he don't have time for jealousy and envy. He just want to be a man, get the job done. Because he has a family, then he has other men that maybe later on in life, he's got to teach himself. He ain't got no time for that mess. Punks and sissies are the ones who sit back. Can you imagine David's army doing that? I wanted to chop Goliath's head off. <laughs> well, hell, you had. I can't tell you how long to do it, but you're too dang scared to get out there, and David had to go and be the man. He go chop the head off, and you want to stand next to him and get the glory. <laughs> Isn't that America? Oh, amen. We need men. Glory to the king. Read, brother, saying. The Lord working with them and confirming the word. With what did he do with the word? Confirming the word. What did he do with the word? Confirming the he word. He confirmed the word. In other words, if, you, if there's a preacher out there running his mouth. And he seemed to be somewhat. Makes no difference to me whatsoever they are. <laughs> Pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> huh? And there's no confirmation to confirm the word. We got problems. We got some serious problems. Go on YouTube. Cut on the TV and see how many people preaching the word. We're not going to pull no Benny Hinn on you. And I have an earpiece right here. Have you to write up, write all your information down on a card. And then at random, I got somebody in the back room that's speaking to me in the earpiece. Tell the truth, 
And on that card, you got your ailments, you got the name of your family members and your name and stuff. And all of a sudden, I look up to heaven and go, Helen. The Holy Spirit said there's a woman named Helen in here, and she has arthritis in her joint. And then you fall out. <laughs> God, y'all shut up. Believe it or not, this stuff happens, and people still continually fall for that mess every day. And they will empty their bank accounts. See, you want to be rich as a preacher? Go lie. Just lie. You want to be poor? Tell the truth. I'll be poor in this world as long as I'm rich in faith. I'll take that one every time. Every time. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. But, but the words right here said, and the Lord working with them, confirming the word. So all them preachers out there that stand on street corners, you think that they got an audience out there they preaching to. They're only talking to their little cats right there that, in their little group. And they got a little camera out there, and they're looking right in the camera. You think they're evangelizing the whole world. And if they do talk with somebody, the, the book says, when you go out and you preach the gospel, fight with everybody that comes down the street. If you can't fight with them, cuss them out. If you can't cuss them out, impugn their character. Is that the gospel? And yet people fall for this mess every day. So a lot of these preachers, you need to just shut up because you ain't been called. Now, where did I get that kind of language from? You know, didn't Elijah say to the false prophets of Baal? Hmm? Well, we'll tell you what. We're going to find out who's on the Lord's side. i tell you what. Go out there and dance around your little thing. Do all you got to do. Cut yourselves and everything else. Go pursue you to the bathroom, whatever. And then when you get finished with all your nonsense, then I'm going to call on the king myself. Now, I ain't no Elijah. I'm just Pastor Dow. And all I do is just obey what he says. That's it. Somebody asked me, well, Pastor Dow, if you pray for somebody and then they fall out and they die, what are you going to do? Step right over and pray for the next one. <laughs> Life and death ain't in my power. Don't you know what the word says? He overcame the one that had power over death. That is the devil. And that makes sense. See, we're always looking for something to have opposition rather than doing the work. Huh? That brother Saquon, boy, he didn't left here. And he, he, he really got, he got Pennsylvania, New York, and he got a pipeline. He just, he just putting the whole thing on fire up there. Huh? Saquon may be Philip. Hmm? You never know. He could be. Could be a, he could be a Philip. Now, let me go ahead and say this. We do not believe in reincarnation. Because if I don't say that, some spiritual person, it's amazing the stuff you got to recover, brother. It's, it's, I'm serious. It's, remember I told you the analytical minds we have? Knowledge has increased and has made us no earthly good. If I didn't say that, brother, I believe you not. They'll get on there and make a video. Pastor Dow believe in reincarnation. You don't believe me? They get a sound bite. Yeah. Pop! There it is. Cut it in there. Next thing you know, you said that mesmerized. Uh. <laughs> Blowing up our phone. What happened? What do you mean what happened? Glory to the king. We say this because this book clearly lets you know those who are his, they that are his, and those who are not. Am I saying that people don't have the ability? No, but when their doctrine disagrees with what's written in this book right here, there's something wrong with the vessel that's doing the talking. This book is still the annuals of time. It's still here till today. Hallelujah. So we need to be about our father's business. All right, the main reason why I'm here uh, this evening is uh, I wanted to show y'all, especially all the newer people here, the, the, uh, the older people here, or, or the laborers who've been out in the field getting their penny for the day. <clears throat> We're familiar with this. 
But did you know right here in the letters of the, the Apostle Saul that it is biblical for you to have churches in your home or assembly or congregations in the house, in the homes? You are more biblically in line today than people go to these big gigantic um, churches out there. <clears throat> I mean, why spend $20 million on a church building when you could take $20 million and then probably buy about uh, three or 400 homes, buy a land and put three or 400 homes on it, and then the saints, they can go out and go work and stuff. They could even be, hey, he, they could really be cheerful givers then. I mean, man, they could give half the income and be living still on the high hall. Or let's say the high cow. Or let's just say the high gold and silver. <clears throat> because, I mean, everything is made clear. It's, it's made there for them. Why spend $20 million on a church building and give a pastor a $5 million a year salary when you got people sitting in your congregation who's getting this false doctrine of so-called prosperity? Where's that gospel preached at in the book? And if you don't understand what I'm saying, I got a video, two-part series, out there on YouTube called The Truth, part one and part two. You want the shock of your life? Go listen to that video. And then when you get finished with that, go read Acts chapter five, the first 15 verses, and get a real good understanding. Then go and talk to your preacher. You better save yourself. Save yourself. Hallelujah from this untoward generation. But having church or assembly or the, having a congregation in a home is more biblical than all these people sitting up piling in like a bunch of cattle into these big old gigantic mausoleums. It really truly is. And we'll show you how. Y'all write these down and we're going to move, okay? All right? Now, I'm going to read some scriptures here. I'm going to give a little rapid fire, all right? 1 Corinthians 14, 26. How's it then, brethren? When you come together, every one of you have a song, have a doctrine, have a tongue, have a revelation, have interpretation, that all things be done unto edifying. All right? Now, Romans 6, Romans 16, verse 5. And likewise, greet the church that is in their house. You need to read a little bit before and a little bit after to get the understanding. We're just going to cover the actual verses itself, okay? Salute my well-beloved Amphenius, who is the first fruits of Archaea unto Christ. 1 Corinthians 16, verse 19. The churches of Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in Yahweh with the church that is in their house. Where's the church at again? We got two places saying the church is in their house, right? We got one over here in the book of Romans. And then we have another one over here making reference over here in the book of 1 Corinthians. Now we're going to go to Colossians 4.15. Salute the brethren which are in Laodicea and Nymphias and the church which is in his house. Where's the church at? In his house. Somebody said, well, Pastor Dow, where are you at? In our living room. You won't see no sign out here that says church. My living room got too small so we had to build a bigger building. And if you don't believe it's our house, it's on our land. Right. And we live here. Right. <laughs> it's just that you've been conditioned. We going to church. I'm going to shock you for a second. How can you go to church when you are the church? Can somebody explain that one to me? How can you do that? D does not the book teach you are the temple of Yah? So how can you go to church? That's the problem. See that mind disconnect there? As long as it's just a place you go. Are you following me? You'll never have any reverence for this house that you should be building him, which the Holy Spirit should be dwelling in. That's right. Praise. Hallelujah. 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 That's right. On point. Hallelujah. So we see again the church is in the house. All right. Okay. Let's see what the, in 1 Timothy 3.15 what he says. But if I tarry long that thou mayest know of how thou ought to behave thyself in the house of Yah, which is the church of the living Yah, the pillar and ground of truth. Philemon 1.2. Philemon 1.2. And to our beloved Aphia and Archippus, our fellow soldier. A fellow what? Soldier. soldier. 
and to the church in thy house. And if you notice, uh, when the saints of the Most High Yahweh receiving the Holy Spirit, they were in the upper room. Why? Because Christ said, whether two or more are gathered together in my name, there they are, or there he is in the midst. So welcome to the end time remnant. The set apart people, the Hebrew Israelites waiting on the second appearing and coming of our king. You're, you're now you're in part of the fellowship of the unashamed. Now you know in whom you believe in. Hallelujah. And we thank the Father for it. Don't you? Hallelujah. So don't think because you're not sitting in a building where there's five and 10 and 15,000, we will never have no building where there's going to be no five, 10, 15, 20,000 people. Because Pastor Dow will split that thing up into every state and ordain elders in each city. That's how we function like the early church did. Is that making sense? I mean, that's a good blueprint, right? You say you don't add to, don't take away. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. And the only way you can think the way I think is if you read this word. <clears throat> I know what happened. you become a student of this word. You're going to think just like I think because I only think how he thinks. I try my best to make sure I try to think like it every day, but we still know we have this wrestling in the flesh, don't we? I do. You may not have too much of a wrestling, but I have a, a, a battle that goes on in the flesh. Hallelujah. And every day I'm in the most high yah I'm winning. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these words of truth. We pray these saints sink deep down in our hearts in the mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Bless y'all. Shalom. Y'all have a good day. I hope this words brought some edifying to the soul, some clarity to the mind, and I hope that you're even more so have determined within your heart and your spirit that with diligence you're going to walk before him in, in holiness all the days of your life until the breath goes out of your body so that we can go into the kingdom. The king is coming. Y'all have a blessed evening, saints.